Okay, this is just a quick video on the Annual Environmental Care Tour report and just to get some ideas out there if you guys have ideas of how we can make this better and improve it or different data that the committee would want to see, um, we can alter this and make changes pretty easily and quickly. So uh, this first dashboard is just looking at the overall inspections or EOC tours conducted and the first one kind of breaks it down by entity so we have um, you know if we want to highlight a specific em entity like Marietta we can see that it highlights Marietta in all of these charts um, and we can see from the charts on the top that the lion's share is of course University Hospital for how many EOC tours were conducted for fire safety, how many were conducted for security, etc. for each program. Um, the next chart down here shows just the percentile of where if, where that entity falls um, in the grand scheme of entities for comparing ourselves among ourselves. Um, if we want to leave this out, uh, it's, it's probably not extremely useful data, but um, I just threw it in there because we had it. Um, the next one is the average program score, so we can see that the red areas are the lowest. We can kind of see our hotspot areas for where we want to, uh, where we should be focusing. Um, now, for University and Children's Hospital Committee, probably the focus area would be um, hazmat for University Hospital, and even hazmat probably for Children's Hospital. Um, so we can kind of identify those as weak points for this this committee. The next dashboard is showing the deficiencies um, and sorts it kind of by program on, on each of these charts. <clears throat> so the first one we can see that for the university hospital areas, which are all purple, um, kind of our, our big items are egress obstructions, store obstructions. So on the last one we noted that hazmat was probably an issue for both children's and, and university hospital. And the two big players in that kind of um, both at the top are 13 times staff response to hazmat spills, what they would do in a hazmat spill was cited as non-compliant. Non and then also employees being able to find their STSs are kind of the key areas there. Um, we can also see for Children's Hospital what the areas are. And again, you can see it's some of the same items, also medical waste handling. Um, and then as far as fire safety for Children's Hospital, a lot less. Two daisy chains, so not a whole lot there. Um, we can also see from this chart um, where our peaks in violations occurred. And there's a huge jump on the 4th, the 4th of October, and that's because we started patient care areas. This, And so everything to the right of that bar is patient care areas. Everything to the left is non-patient care areas. Um, so you can kind of see the comparison there. And then in this final one, we can see whether we want to see the top three violations or we want to see the top five violations per entity. Um, we can we can do that. So if we want to just focus down on maybe the, the top violation for each entity across programs, we can see that staff response to hazmat spill was top for children's. University was egress obstructed um, at 27 occurrences. So hopefully that's helpful data. Deficiencies by fi uh, facility, we can kind of see um, something is not, not occurring exactly right here. There's a bunch of others that are not filling in appropriately, so I'm not sure if it's a memory issue or because I'm looking at this on the Mac, but um, should filter down quite a bit as we get uh, to more violations. So this is just looking at people that have over five violations, um, departments that have over six, six violations and more. Um, so our two big players are for Marietta, but when it comes to University Hospital, uh, when we filter it by five violations, we see that there's a, a tie, a four-way tie for having five violations for an EOC tour. Okay, this is um, an update on just this one. I think something was wrong on the formatting of my screen and for some reason it wasn't showing properly. So this is the full um, page there. And again, this one we can filter by entity as we can in most of these charts. So if we wanna just focus on East Campus or just on Children's Hospital, for instance, we can just see out of Children's Hospital that the big player there is specialty team center 
um, had three violations where most of the others had two or one in most cases. Um, university hospital, a little bit more data. We can see that the larger the circle, the more violations they had. So some are so small that they actually don't even show the the uh, name of the department on there, but you can see kind of where the, the general problem areas are. All right, and that was it. Again, we can, uh, on this one we can filter, you know, if we want to just see those with two or more violations, three or more violations, etc. So you can kind of uh, dig in a little bit to the data. All right, thanks. Egress comparisons, this chart I thought was very uh, helpful in realizing maybe some of the challenges with egress. We have two egress questions on fire safety. One is, is egress obstructed? And that's the blue lines you see there. And then the other one is, do staff know how to resolve egress obstructions? Do they know the, the process for you know, contacting dispatch to get rid of uh, gurneys and wheelchairs and EVS to get rid of beds and that kind of thing? And you can see that most of the time, even though obstructions were observed, staff knew how to how to respond to those and get rid of them. Um, East Campus is the only one that actually cited a deficiency to the egress knowledge question. Um, and so you can see that there. The percentage on the end here is just how many, um, the percentage of tours that are citing this. So you can see that at East Campus, 16% of our tours, almost 17%, uh, we're citing egress and 15% of our tours in the university hospital. And then finally, there's an inspector's um, dashboard and we can kind of see um, who was involved as an inspector for what program, what their average score was um, on the inspections they conducted, and then also the number of inspections they conducted. <clears throat> and then the um, average time late that it was put into Envision Connect um, is going down the right hand side of here and I'm not exactly sure why these are in the negative I think the the probably the explanation behind this is if you start an inspection the day before and don't finish it until uh, the day later I think that's probably what's going on here so the, that's the quick dashboard if there's um, any other information that you think would be important to show to the safety committee um, we can definitely uh, try to work that in. The CAP data I wanted to include um, is being a bit of a challenge to get into the dashboards here. Um, I do know that it's about 10 approved CAPs from EOC tours, so out of our total violations, that's that's not that many. Um, unfortunately, we should be having a lot more than that, but um, I'm going to still try to work that CAP data in and hopefully get it in to the report before the safety committee meeting. Um, if not, it might be a future report where we show corrective action plans. In fact, it might be more um, valid coming maybe a month or two after the tours were finished. So that way um, it gives the users or the department heads time to imp implement corrective actions and get things closed out. So, all right, I think that's it. We'll probably stop there. And if you have questions or things to add, just let me know.